something that's caught my eye in the news again is uh, Jerry Sadowitz getting his gig cancelled at the Edinburgh Fringe. Um, so, the Edinburgh Fringe is a huge comedy festival that runs every year. Jerry Sadowitz is a niche comedian who was booked to do two nights at the Pleasance, which is one of the major fringe venues. And they cancelled the second night after seeing the first. So they cancelled and refunded people's tickets with only a day's warning. People will have travelled to see it. It's actually quite an extreme move. It, it doesn't seem like such a big deal when you first read the headline, but it's quite an odd thing to do. Um, newspapers are kind of talking about this as like a freedom of speech issue. And I, it is a freedom of speech issue. I'm not saying that because I think freedom of speech are like magic words that justifies anything or because I think it makes my opinion right. It's just honest. Um, you know, freedom of speech isn't like a set of concrete rules. It's an ideal that we strive for and ultimately our ideals clash with each other, like all the time. You know, we all want to live in a society where we've got as much freedom as possible, but we don't want to live in the purge. We want to live in a safe and civilised society, and so you have to curtail people's freedoms. And most people agree that sometimes you've got to limit freedom of speech. For instance, I don't think sending death threats should be covered under your freedom of speech. I think that should be illegal. The reason I've said, like, I want to say this is a freedom of speech issue is it kind of annoyed me that the Pleasants, in their statement when they cancelled the gig, said, we don't censor comedians. I'm like, well, that's literally what you're doing. You've just cancelled a gig right at the last minute because you don't agree with the material. You've deemed it unacceptable. That is censorship. Whether it's right or wrong is a different issue. But can we call it what it is, please? Do I think this is a serious issue about freedom of speech? No, not really. Um, you can't ultimately force a venue to host something that they're not okay with. It is a bit complicated and I'm going to get into that, but I feel that's the bottom line. The other thing is, you know, I don't think this is going to impact Jerry Sadowitz negatively. I think completely the opposite. Lots of people like me had never heard of him before now. He's now got loads of fame uh, from this story. And that will have attracted people who would like to go and see his extreme material, even though that's only a minority. Something I'm much more concerned about with freedom of speech and comedy is um, someone called the police on Joe Lycett recently or about a joke he made. I, I found that surreal. Like, when you read that the police have been called over a comedian's joke, you think, you know, maybe this was Jimmy Carr or somebody? Not Joe Lycett. Um, you know, the police did conclude he hadn't done anything illegal, but they actually investigated it. So that's much more serious when the law is getting involved in what a comedian's saying. Um, I hope that's not a sign of things to come and that's just one absolute weirdo at a Joe Lysett gig. I'm going to be honest, I'm going to go on a bit of a rant now. Um, because people are talking about the acceptability of Jerry Sadowitz's comedy, which is fine. But a lot of the stuff they're saying, I feel like I've entered some strange parallel universe where nobody has ever heard of stand-up before. Or really any kind of controversial entertainment. Um, so, what did he do that was so offensive that they cancelled the gig? Uh, one of the things that newspapers have cited, and that Twitter are outraged about, is he got his penis out. Apparently at a woman, or sometimes it's cited at the front row. I... I'm not sure how this works in a comedy context. Like, Getting your penis out at a woman would normally mean sort of like flashing someone in the park or something where only she can see what he's doing. But surely if you're performing in front of an audience of like 150 people, if you get your penis out, everybody sees it. I don't know what happened. Maybe comments were directed at her. I, I don't know. Um, and 
like, I can understand that you think that's disgusting and distasteful, and that's absolutely fine. But consenting adults can do what they like for entertainment, really, with that's another ideal I hold, like freedom of speech. Again, it sometimes has to be curtailed if people are being harmed. But some people will be okay with seeing a comedy performance where someone's going to flash their penis at them. I would probably be included in that. I wouldn't rule that out. I would rule out a lot of other stuff Sadowitz does and I wouldn't book to see it. But you've got to accept that if people want to see this, it's different. So... Was this consenting? Um, he's known for doing it. Um, I looked him up on Wikipedia. It does say that he has a habit of getting his cock out or just stripping bollock naked on stage. Um, he also basically just explicitly promoted it in the video he made on YouTube advertising his show. Uh, he's holding a puppet which says that you should come and see his gig and the puppet says he's gonna be funny, he's gonna be rude, he's gonna get his dick out. So, a man who's known for getting his dick out told people he was gonna get his dick out at a show and then when he got his dick out everyone was shocked? That makes no sense to me. Um, and you might go, well, it was aimed at one woman in the audience, but that's kind of standard fare for comedy, to aim sort of humiliation or insults at audience members. Like, I don't particularly think it's that different. And ultimately, if you've agreed that you might see someone's dick, that's all that's happened? And the Pleasants have said, amusingly, that they don't accept comedy that attacks people's dignity. And again, like I said, like comedians frequently pick on audience members. Like, most comedy is attacking somebody's dignity. Like, have these people never seen comedy before? Um, the only thing I could criticise is the Pleasants did not put uh, a warning about genital nudity on the ticket page for the performance. Um, it was just 18 plus, obviously, uh, and said it contained strong language and distressing themes. Strong language and distressing themes is quite a standard warning for stand-up comedy. You wouldn't necessarily think that that applied to anything as extreme as Jerry Sadowitz. So, mm, should they have done that? Maybe, but it's actually not the culture. I'd say this is a much more widespread problem. I do know multiple people who've gone to see comedy or theatre and been um, shocked to see nudity there or, you know, something else that they weren't expecting of the content. So I can't really criticise the Pleasants for not putting a nudity warning when nobody else does that either. Oh, and he's not the only person showing his genitals at the Edinburgh Fringe. People do that. If I'm blunt though, the issue's probably not the penis. It's almost definitely not the penis. The issue appears to be that he used a racial slur uh, to describe Rishi Sunak. Um, and the Pleasants issued a statement along the lines of um, Something like, certain things in speech are becoming unacceptable even when playing a character, times are changing. Uh, that's not an exact quote, I'm afraid. Uh, he is not the comedian, the first comedian by any means to use racial slurs in his comedy. But the examples I was initially going to use, I've realised, are from about ten years back. And this kind of thing is becoming more and more unacceptable in culture. Um, and I think if you agree this is unacceptable um, to use slurs that don't apply to you in your comedy, don't book comedians for your venue who are known to do this. And he is known to do this. It's not the first time he's done it. And the Pleasants have booked him before. So they've probably heard him use racial slurs before. So I feel like they knew what they were getting themselves in for. Um, 
as it happens, I don't agree with this view on flirts. Uh, you might say, oh, well, you know, that's easy for you to say you're a white person. Uh, and obviously, yes, when talking about racial slurs, but I'm not just talking about racial slurs. I am disabled and I have had ableist slurs aimed at me. And I think it's okay to use misogynist or ableist slurs in, in satire, in comedy, in that kind of thing. I don't feel that it's never okay. Um, but I am increasingly in the minority here. And to be honest, Jerry Sadowitz is kind of out of touch. In his statement on being cancelled, he said, uh, if you don't like this kind of comedy, you can stick to carry-on films. Like, they're not even politically correct anymore by a long way. No one is watching carry-on films. It's not the 70s. However, because it's not the 70s, like, people know what stand-up is like. There is relatively offensive stand-up on the television nowadays. There is more offensive stuff on YouTube. People who don't watch stand-up know that it's often pushing boundaries and it's often offensive. You know, we're not circulating bootleg, te bootleg tapes of Derek and Clive anymore. And I think, you know, because of this, you've got to take responsibility for who you book as an event organiser. Like, the Wikipedia article gives a good overview of him. Like, you know, are you telling me they couldn't have looked him up on Wikipedia beforehand, or they were somehow so naive about the nature of stand-up that they thought they didn't have to? Uh, and again, they've booked him before. They know who he is. And the other thing that gets me is it was only two nights. Like, could they not have allowed one more night? Like, if they booked him all week, I'd be a bit more sympathetic. Like, they could have potentially updated their warnings instead. So they could have put warnings on the listing for the show. Before the show, they could have aired a warning saying, you know, this is going to contain genital nudity, it's going to contain racial slurs, it's going to be quite offensive, well, very offensive. You know, you can do that. But they just cancelled it. They claimed that they had an unprecedented number of complaints and that people walked out. Curiously, Jerry Sadowitz said that no one walked out and he felt the gig went well. So I don't know who's telling the truth here. It's really one person's word against another. Um, if I'm completely honest, I don't massively trust either of them to be telling the truth here. They've both got their own agenda. I tried to look to see if I could find anybody who was at that gig and say, did anyone walk out? And all I found was one tweet from someone who did say they didn't see anyone walk out, but that's one tweet. It's not exactly uh, high class evidence. Interestingly, I saw a lot of tweets saying that there are always people who walk out of a Jerry Sadowitz gig uh, because of its extreme nature. You've got that option if you go to see offensive comedy. If you feel that actually this is too far for you, you can leave. I've gone to see things that have offended me. Um, not so much that I've left. But also, I've never thought to complain to the venue. They didn't write the joke. And to be completely honest, like, I've already heard it now. That, that already stings. They can't take it back. That's just my look on things. And again, people booking tickets. If you're going to go see stand-up, you should look up who you're going to see because it's often offensive and offence is subjective. And you probably want to ensure that you actually find this person funny if you're going to pay for tickets and spend your evening watching them. You know, how far do we go to protect people from offence if they can't inform themselves reasonably? Like, I feel you're getting into an area of, well, you could put warnings on it, but what if people just don't read them? Like, how far do you go to protect people's stupidity? The Pleasants did say, and I'm going to start defending them a bit more here, that people abuse the staff. That's never acceptable, is it? Um, just never. I don't know why people were abusing the staff. 
The only reason that I can say it would be alright for them to cancel the second night, like, and that I don't think this was a massive fuck up on their part, is if for some reason he attracts a kind of audience that are going to behave unacceptably. Um, but I don't, I haven't seen anything that suggests that he promotes this kind of thing. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know why people have used the staff, um, but that isn't okay. Some people have suggested that it's not actually the audience who was so offended and did all these complaints of the staff members. And that is a tricky issue because my point earlier about, well, people have agreed to go see this, it doesn't apply to the staff, does it? It's their job, they've got to work the shift. But again, the Pleasants knew what he does when they booked him. So they should have thought about this. They should have thought about the well-being of their own employees in advance. I I don't know if there's some sort of procedure. Like, I think he is probably the most extreme comedian by what I can look up, but he's definitely not the only offensive comedian out there. I don't know if there is something you do, you know, if your um, venue books Frankie Boyle or whatever, um, whether... You somehow, like, send a thing out among the staff of, like, okay, who's up for watching this shift? Um, and who's not okay with it? I, I don't know. I don't know how it works. Um, but again, I'm... Ultimately, I am completely blaming the venue. None of that answers the question that's going around, which is, is Sadowitz's comedy acceptable? You know, and ultimately that's a matter of opinion, I can't tell you right from wrong. But the jokes he does that use racial slurs and, like, racist rhetoric, I guess, from what it looks like to me, the joke is on the racist. And loads of comedians do this kind of thing. You know, they put on characters, they're not using their honest opinions. Some comedians use their honest opinions in comedy, but many don't. Many do the exact opposite. They embody everything that they hate and caricature it so that the audience can mock it and laugh at it. Um, a comedian that came to mind that's very well known for doing this is Sarah Silverman. Sadowitz said in his response to the cancellation, I am not Jim Davidson. And He's got a point. You know, people are comparing him to Bernard Manning. He is not Bernard Manning. Bernard Manning openly admitted he was a racist. You know, he's not Roy Chubby Brown. He's not even John Cleese. Like, John Cleese isn't really doing comedy anymore, but that's what he's known for. And now he's just mouthing off in papers about Britain not feeling British enough and crap like that. Um, I really don't think Jerry Sadowitz is a bigot, and nor are his fans. Like, there, I can't find anything of him saying this kind of stuff or behaving like this in his personal life. Again, in stark contrast to someone like Jim Davidson. And I kind of had a look at, like, who's on Twitter saying they like his comedy, and I found people who describe themselves as woke, people who are complaining about racism in politics, people who are talking about gender equality. Like, it, you know, you look up fans of Roy Chubby Brown, whose jokes do not appear to be on the racist, they do just appear to be about minorities. You know, they are not saying things like that, they are saying the complete opposite. The comments on his stuff are like, yeah, he's right, there's too many immigrants. Um, I... Comedy allows us relief from a horrible world that is full of things like racism and bigotry. And, you know, this theory about why we laugh at black humour, that goes all the way back to Freud, possibly even further. For me, it's a massive coping mechanism. <laughs> We can't escape the horrors of this world, so we laugh at them. And because we can't escape the horrors of reality, to me, there's always a sense of irony with the censorship of media. Like, the most awful things I've heard have not been in stand-up, they have not been on television, they have not been in theatre. 
They have been things I have heard in person in situations that I did not get myself into and I couldn't get myself out of. You know, like, and I have heard some horrible things, um, you know, both aimed at me, not aimed at me, aimed at groups I'm part of, not aimed at groups I'm part of, things people have said directly to me, things people have said and I've overheard. Like, on a few occasions, I've basically been told I don't deserve to live or overheard things that state that. And yet it's debated and censored whether I can hear things that are usually less offensive in the context of comedy and satire in a situation that I agreed to. Or, well, I haven't gone to see the Jerry Sadowitz gig, this is hypothetical, but you get what I mean. And, like, this doesn't seem to be applied to other forms of media. Like, we're talking about Sadowitz just because he's in the papers. And while his extreme performances are unique in a way, like, Doing extreme things in entertainment is not unique. There is some extreme stuff in films, in TV series, and in live performance. You can go see Ramstein live, and they'll have a song about cutting a guy's dick off and eating it, and they've been known to get out a big dildo and squirt fake semen all over the audience. And... I'm not really aware that people complained about that or described it as a sex crime, which some people have described Jerry Sadowitz getting his penis out as. Um, because we kind of think that's what you've agreed to if you go see Ramstein live. And they're not, they're not unique, especially within metal. You know, and with other music, you know, we can listen to song lyrics that glorify violence and misogyny. You can go listen to Eminem rap about violence against women. And that's not getting cancelled. If anything, it's filling out stadiums. But we're having a debate on whether Jerry Sadowitz should be allowed to perform. And I don't get it. Particularly, he's not big either. 